In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create the two type of camera. A camera that can follow the player everywhere it goes, and another camera that is able to pan when the player is moving in any direction. So without further ado, let's get started. Before to start to work on the camera, I want to address a problem that we have right now. So if I launch the game and I zoom, I uh, put the, the, the game in full screen, you can see that we can uh, see that a gray background behind, uh, behind it. I don't want that. I want the, the uh, game to be stretched to the size of the screen. So for that, I need, just need to go to project, project setting. I need to go here on display window and I need to change the stretch mode here to from disable to viewport. And so now if I launch the game, and I just put it in full screen. You can see that now we have like the game that uh, display nicely. So that's what I want. So now we need to create the camera. For creating the camera, uh, we already have created the camera some uh, some videos ago. So it's right there. And as you can see here, when I click on my camera, uh, I, it is on enable and the zoom is on free and free. So if you put like uh, if you create a camera right now, normally yours should be on one and one. And so it should result of something like this when you launch the game, like having like a sort of like big, big chunk of the, the screen that is covered. Uh, here I put it on free because for me that's just match perfectly the size of my, uh, of my game. Now that this is done, we need basically to have two things. We need to have uh, first an object to follow, which is our player. And then we need also to have limit to our camera, because if we don't have any limit to our camera, when we're going to move, we're going to be able to see uh, the area that are not uh, covered, the area that we shouldn't see uh, from, from our game. So that, for example, here, that gray area. So the thing we need to do first is we need to create a script on our camera node. So I click on my camera, I click on the script icon, I'm going to put that script into my script folder, right there and i'm going to create a folder here and i'm going to call it gui because we're going to have like some uh, some script that's going to go into that folder as well i'm just going to rename that script camera instead of camera 2d it's way better and so now i can create and so now i have my script here so first let's see how i can uh, move the um, the camera when my player is moving so there's two solutions the one that you see all the times is like you take the camera and you nest it into the player and then when you launch the game you just have to like move the player the camera moves with it it's okay it's not a it's not a bad way to do things but it's not the best because sometimes you want to have the camera that is uh, there before the player Player. and if you do so then you're gonna have some problems uh, with the player it's gonna result in some error <laughs> me what I like to do is I leave the camera out of my player like this and I want to connect the camera to the player so for that there's a very easy way to do so like you just need to do an export variable I'm gonna call it player and I'm gonna set it to be equal to a character body 2d now because we have made an export if I click on my camera now you can see we have player assigned here and so I can click on that assign there and I can look for my player here and I can just click on OK and so now uh, the camera knows that my player is my player in the scene right here and so now I can just get the position of my player and I can set it to the position of my camera to do so I just have to go here to the process uh, function and I just need to do position equal player dot position and so now although my camera is not nested to my player when I'm going to launch the game it's going to follow my player and this is way better because then after that you can make a lot of uh, different mechanics with your camera for example zooming panning etc it's going to make that way easier to do but now we need to have um, another thing is that when i am launching the game you can see that when i play and i go to the left uh, side of the screen the camera goes with me and then i see uh, that portion of the screen that i don't want to see uh, so for that we need to set up some limit but how do we do that uh, the best way to do so in my opinion is to actually get the portion of the screen that is filled with something and then use that as a limit because basically we're going to have a ground we're going to have a, a time map everywhere in our game and so we can use that to set up a limit for our game the only problem that we're going to have here is that uh, we just need to take a look at the that sort of like uh, orange 
Orange uh, cross here, which is the basically the, the, the transform of our uh, nodes. So here, if I go to player, you can see that the um, transform of my player is there. If I go to ground, you can see that on the ground, the transform of my uh, ground is here. Problem is that this is gonna interfere with the limit of our camera because we have we need to have the uh, the tile that start at that point uh, so what we can do is we can just toggle uh, snapping option and we can just then move that ground around here and this will do but like the best way for me to do so is just to go to my tile map so i click on ground i click here on tile map i go to my terrain and i just come here and i just want to go to my ground here and i want now to uh, basically erase that and I want to erase that as well. And I want to do so for the stone. I want to do that like this, do that like that. And now I just want to uh, basically redo, uh, redo that here. So I'm just going to go to my ground. I'm just going to grab this. Now I just need to disconnect this. I need to make, my, make sure that I am on the ground. And so now I can just uh, repaint some element. So for example, here I can put myself on the rect. That would be better. I can do something like this, something like this, maybe something like this even. And so uh, I think that everything here is fine. So now I can put myself on stone. I can go to uh, my tile, tile set uh, or tile map here. I can select that portion right there. So I can just come and select that. I can just put the scattering to, for example, something like eight. And now I can just use the uh, rec tool here and i can do something like this and something like this okay so now i can save i can just launch back the game to see if everything is right and so i can come here i don't see any any issues whatsoever okay so that's perfect and so now we can uh, work on how to use those limits there so for that we need to go back to the script and here I'm going to do the exact same thing that I've done for the player. I'm going to do at export var tile map. And here I'm going to set it equal to tile map here. Tile map with a capital T and a capital M. This is very important. And so now we can use our tile map to um, basically uh, get the limit of our level. So for that, we just need to go to the ready function and we're going to create some uh, several variables. The first one is going to be map rect. And we're going to be set it equal to tile map dot get underscore use underscore rect. This will check into the tile map um, what, um, what tiles are uh, filled up, are used basically. And then after that, we're going to uh, create another variable. We're going to call it tile size. And that tile size, we're going to uh, set it equal to tile map dot cell quadrant size. And then here, we're going to create another uh, variable. We're going to call it world size. And we're going to be set it equal to our map rect dot size multiply, multiply by our tile size. And now we can set the limit. So for setting the limit, we can go back to our camera. I'm just going to go here on my 2D and then here on camera. And on, the, on camera, we can see that here we have limit. And here we have some uh, incredible numbers that have been set up. Uh, here, left, I can put zero. And top, I can put zero. And you can see that now it changed the camera. And now, uh, if I launch the camera, uh, I'm going to see that my uh, limits are there. But if I launch the camera now, it's not going to work because I haven't assigned the tile map to my inspector uh, tile map here. So here, I just need to click on my camera 2D. I need to go here to tile map, assign, and I can assign my ground. So now, if I launch the game, you can see that now I can't go over that. And my camera is still following my player. But if I go to the left, or if I go completely on top, it stops. So that's good. Uh, now we just need to set up the logic for uh, the uh, right and bottom uh, part of the camera. So for that, I just need to go back to my script. And here, still in the ready function, I need to uh, tap limit underscore right. This is the code name of uh, that function in the inspector. If you go here, limit 
dot left, limit dot top is at zero, and here I'm, I want to set up limit dot right and limit dot bottom. So here, limit right, I can set it equal to world size world underscore size dot x, and then I can do limit underscore bottom, and then I can set it equal to world size dot y. And so now it's gonna work. So let's launch the game. I put it in big screen. And so now if I go at the bottom, you can see it stop at the bottom. And if I go to the right, it stop to the right. And if I change the um, the size of my uh, tile map, so for example, I come here and I'm gonna go to my tile map there, air, terrain, ground. And then here, instead of like stone, I just go back to my ground. If I now, just create more a uh, room for my tile map let's say for example something like this up now if i launch the game you're gonna see that it's gonna uh, change how the game works and for example here i'm gonna be able to go down i will still see that portion uh, because like basically like uh, uh, you need to have to, to cover the rectangles uh, nicely but if i go at the bottom you can see i can't go under that like the camera doesn't follow me and uh, that's how you can set up the limit uh, in Godot. There's many ways you can do that and there's so many things that uh, we can do like I can show you how also to pan camera in a specific way like very uh, very like uh, retro like I'm, I'm using to like I'm used to do it on my uh, Metroidvania for example but this is a very uh, good way that works very well when you are like making a RPG. I'm just gonna cover that part here so like this everything is nice I'll just go back to my ground tile map my ground here and I'm just gonna cover that part right there and that's it uh, the only drawback on this of this method is that you really can't go uh, much more to the uh, left or to the top so if you're creating a game just know that you will not be able to like uh, make something of the game right there like you will be uh, uh, in able to make only on that sort of like part of the screen like this like you will be able to make it here, but you will not be able to like make it here or there or here. For example, that's the only drawback of that uh, of that method. So now that we have that, I'm going to show you how you can make another type of camera that can just follow the player by panning uh, on the next uh, on the next levels. So for that, what we're going to do is like I'm going to go to my main level. I'm going to create a new camera. I could like add uh, just the script on that camera, but I want to show you the difference. So for that, I'm just going to create a new node directly and that camera I'm going to create a script on it and that script I'm going to call it camera panning and I'm going to put it into the folder that I've created before which is script GUI and I'm going to put it there voila so basically we're going to do almost the same thing so for that I'm going to first create uh, an export variable I'm going to call it player and it's going to be equal to a character body 2d um, and then I don't need the, the ready function, so I can remove it. I just need the process delta. So in the process delta, what I need to do is first, I need to get the position. So that position, I'm going to do position equal player dot position. Uh, then I need to create two variables. And that's why I'm putting it into the process delta because the two variables that I'm going to create need to be checked constantly. So like this, it can keep track of the player position. So here, the first variable, I'm going to call it x and I'm going to set it equal to floor uh, position dot x divided by 320 and then I'm going to multiply it by 320. Floor is a function if you go to help uh, and you tap floor you click on it, uh, returns a new vector with all components rounded down towards negative infinity. So for example, if you, uh, if uh, here we are making a modulo, and so if the result of that uh, calculation is 1.2, it will be rounded to one, uh, for example, that's what we do. So like this, we are making sure by using uh, floor that we don't end up with having a float, but uh, an integer. And then this is for the uh, vector x, so the horizontal axis. Now we need to do the same for the vertical one. So here we're going to do floor. This time we're going to tap position.y and this time I'm going to divide it by the size I want. So it's going to be 180 for me and I'm going to multiply it by 180. 
And so by this, we have created the limit that our camera needs to, uh, to have. And so like this, we will be able to toggle the movement uh, when one of those conditions are met. And so now we can do position equal vector two, and then we can pass our X and Y. So now things that we need to do is like, we need to click on our camera 2D here, and we need to change the zoom. So we're gonna put it at three. And also anchor mode here, we need to uh, change it from drag center to fix top left. And so now that we have done that, let's run the game. You can see that the camera is the same, but now if I move to the right, you're gonna see it's gonna change the camera. And as you can see, it changed the, uh, the camera smoothly. So that's perfect, but we can make even better. We can uh, use what we call a twin. So like this, we can make a sort of panning movement. So for that, we need to create a twin. So for creating the twin, we need to create a new variable. So here I'm gonna call it uh, twin, and it's gonna be uh, the colon equal to uh, create underscore twin. And then after that, I'm gonna set a trans. That trans is gonna be twin with a capital T dot trans cubic. This is like different type of like twin you can use basically. Uh, and then here I'm gonna do set underscore is and between parentheses, I'm gonna again tap twin with a capital T and we're gonna do is in out. So now here I'm gonna just call my variable that I've created twin and I'm gonna call it twin underscore property. I'm gonna call that. And uh, between parentheses, I'm gonna set it equal to self. I'm gonna uh, say check the position. And then here, I'm gonna put a comma vector two. I'm gonna go and get the limit of uh, the camera I want to set. And then here, I'm gonna put 0 0.14. This is like a sort of the speed of the twin. And so now if I launch back the game, I put it in full screen, you're gonna say we're gonna move like way more smoothly as you can see. And so now if we, if we go down, for example, it works, works perfectly like this. Voila. And so now we can do that very nicely. We can move and that's perfect. I think I can move to this side. Yeah, I can move to this side because with this method, I don't have to like uh, set automatically the um, the limit to zero here, for example, the limit are not set to zero. If I put zero here and I put zero here, I won't, I won't be able to move uh, further left or uh, further top. You can see it doesn't move, it doesn't move. But if I go down, it's gonna move. Voila, and if I go to the right, it's gonna move as well. The last thing I want to do here is just, I want to rename those cameras. So here, that camera, I'm gonna call it camera underscore panning and I'm gonna save it as a, a prefab, a, a scene. So like this, I will have it uh, if I want to use it. So for that, I'm gonna go to scene, I'm gonna create a new folder here, I'm gonna call it GUI, and here I'm gonna save that camera there. And I'm gonna do the same for the other camera, this one. I'm gonna also save it, and I'm gonna call it uh, follow underscore camera, and I'm gonna also save it. Uh, so. I'm gonna just right click, save branch as scene, and I'm gonna save it in the same folder. So like this, everything is done well. And so I just need to now reassign my, um, my uh, player and tile map. So I click on assign player, and then here I'm gonna click on assign, and it's gonna be the ground. And I can delete this one. I don't need it. And my photo camera, I can just put it back to enable. And so now I can use that camera without any issues whatsoever. So that's basically the code, the basic of like uh, creating a camera in Godot. Like we can cover way more things than we can cover, for example, the possibility to have like uh, a camera that zoom on a specific location or object when you are arriving somewhere or all those kind of things. That's something I can potentially do in the future. But already with those two types of like camera, you're quite uh, quite good um, quite good with like your games so we're gonna move on to the next uh, video